Donald Trump had a rally over the weekend in Conroe, Texas that I was actually on the ground for. Let's go over the damage. So as I said, I was in person in Conroe this weekend to cover the rally and mainly talk to Trump supporters. And I got some crazy responses in my interviews with these Trump supporters, but I'm gonna go over that tomorrow because the actual Trump rally itself, the speech that he gave has so much content in it that I wanna go over that we'll do that today and then tomorrow we'll go over my interviews with Trump supporters. Let's jump in. So Donald Trump started his rally bragging about what he cares about more than anything in the world and that is crowd size. Let's take a look. This is a big crowd. You set an all-time record. This is a big crowd. I wish the press just one time would turn those cameras around. They go back. Football feels back. Thank you. Okay, so let me start off by saying he definitely does draw notably big crowds compared to Joe Biden, compared to other politicians, especially because he's not even running in any election this year. He's just doing some random rally and a lot of people do show up. But as I mentioned, I was there. There definitely was not football fields back of people. And I heard people saying there's 50,000, 80,000, nowhere close. My estimation is somewhere less than 10,000, which again is still impressive for just some random rally, but he always over exaggerates it, which just to me shows a lot of insecurity. Okay, so moving on, a lot of this segment is going to be criticizing Trump. So I wanna give him a little bit of credit in this upcoming clip to hopefully win over some of you right wingers. So you'll accept my criticisms with an open mind later in the video. So here's Trump making fun of Biden, and it was kind of funny. He said, he'd say, where would you rather be on a Thursday night in the state of Oklahoma? No, this is Texas. He'd say, this is Texas. So during the 2020 campaign, Biden did misspeak about where he was at different times and also said, that's why I'm running for Senate multiple times. So I think that's a perfectly fine criticism from Trump and it gave me a little giggle. So moving on to something much more serious, Trump then went on to call immigration across the southern border an invasion. Let's take a look. Before our leaders talk about invasions of other countries, they need to stop the invasion of this country. It's being invaded. So I'm gonna try to do a deep dive on immigration as soon as I can. Obviously the stories coming out like daily have been pretty busy and so I have to cover those. But when I get a free day, I'm gonna cover immigration and why a lot of the fears that are talked about mainly among conservatives are actually things you don't need to be concerned about. And there's actually a lot of benefits that aren't talked about with immigration. I'm gonna go over all that. Just trust me, even if you're a right winger, I think you'll be convinced and I'll do that as soon as I can. But before then, even if you're someone who is very afraid of immigration across the Southern border, you have to agree using the term invasion is conveying the sense of panic and is dehumanizing the people that are coming. These are families, these are children, mothers, fathers. Obviously in any large batch of people, there's gonna be some bad people. So when they talk about the individual anecdotes of this person who immigrated and did something bad, that's just such an unfair representation of who these people are because that's one out of a big group of people that they're focusing all their time talking about. When the vast majority of the people immigrating across the southern border are just people who had very bad life circumstances in the country they were originally in and they're trying to make a better life for them in the families. But again, even if that scares you, you have to agree. Dehumanizing all the people who are trying to come here for a better life is such a nasty thing to do. And it will inevitably lead to very bad consequences in the future for these people because you're programming your followers' minds to hate them before they've even had any contact with a single one of these people that you're talking about. Obviously, that's a pretty serious topic. So for a little comedic relief before we keep going with the more serious clips, let's watch Trump <laughs> randomly break into reading a poem during his rally. Snake. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. Separate from that being Donald Trump and all the things that he's done, all that type of stuff, just watching an elderly man who's former president up at a podium 
whip out a sheet of paper and start reading a poem uh, it's actually kind of adorable even though i'm sure the point he was trying to make with that poem because it was related to immigration was terrible then he goes on to address covid and he says we should be free of the covid mandates and notice this is the first time he does it he uses the word racist to define his opposition and he'll end up doing this multiple times throughout the speech and i want you to take note because i think he's trying to flip it like oh maga's called racist a lot of times let's flip it and just call all of them racist and then it's kind of canceling out their insults let's take a look it's time for the american people to declare independence from every last covid mandate we have to tell this band of hypocrites tyrants and racists that we're done with having them control our lives mess with our children and close our businesses we're moving on from covid whether they like it or not we're moving on Okay, so to all the people who have been saying we need to end the mandate, stop closing businesses, back to regular life, I really want to ask you, because right now I'm in California and everything's back to normal. I mean, you have to wear a mask sometimes, occasionally you have to show your vaccine card, but pretty much life is back to normal. I don't know why people are acting like we're still in COVID lockdowns and we're not able to live a normal life. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, let's be real. We're pretty much back to normal. So next we're going to look at three back-to-back -back clips of Trump talking about how bad of a shape America is in. Because we have to save a country. Our country is dying. Our country is dying. I'm trying to save the USA, which is in the worst condition and position that I believe it has ever been in. I don't think there's ever been a time where we were so disrespected and laughed at by the world. We're like a third world country. And our country is paying the biggest price in its history because we're going to hell and we're going to hell very fast and we soon will not have a country left. Okay, let's go ahead and stop the music. I'm just going to talk right to you, unscripted, no edits, just talking. Right-wingers, everyone pay attention, but right-wingers, I'm talking to you. Why is it, and this is, I'm not trying to be f facetious or anything, this is honest talk. Why is it that whenever the left-wing criticizes stuff about America, we say that certain systems are broken, we say there's historical inequities, and all these different problems should be addressed? Why is it that you call that hating America? And you know, that, that's what y'all say, right? The left wing hates America. They want to tear it down because they think all these things are bad about it. And we've never said everything's bad about America. We said there's a lot of things that could be improved. And you remember, Trump said, AOC, Ilan Omar should go back to where they came from because if they hate the country so much, why would they want to be in it? You remember that? And we're cheering it along? Yeah, that's right. Go back, AOC, yeah. But then you just saw it. Trump said America or the country is dying. It's dying. That's not hating America. Now, me personally, I don't think it is. I think you can believe that your country is in a really bad shape and it should be improved. Now, I disagree. I don't think the reasons that Trump would lay out of why America is dying, I would not agree with. But I think it's totally fine to say that because I think you can love something and think that it needs to be improved a lot. You can love something and think it's going in a really bad direction. Think about if you were a parent and your kid had like a drug addiction or something and their life was just falling apart, no job, all that type of stuff. You would say they're <laughs> falling apart. They have a lot of improvements they need to make, but you would still love them. I think it's a similar relationship with left-wingers and America. It's like, wow, a lot of stuff is going bad right now with America, but we want to improve it because we love it. But then y'all call that hating America, right? But then Trump is allowed to say, we're in the worst condition we've ever been, America's dying, blah, 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 and y'all don't care. And that's patriotic. I think both are totally fine. I'm going to disagree with you about why you think America's falling apart, but I think it's fine to say, and I'm not going to call you an America hater for it. You feel me? Come on. Okay, let's jump back into it. So from now on, everyone gets to say what they think is broken about America. Doesn't mean that they hate the country. Good? So the next thing I'm going to show you is when he moves on to talk about the prosecutors that are investigating him right now and his businesses, which I think signals a fear that he has that they're getting close to unearthing criminal actions that he or his businesses have taken. And so he's kind of prepping his audience saying, look, 
these people are not credible. They're coming after me. They hate me. And that's why they're doing this. So anything that you hear when all this information comes out, it's not true. They just hate me. All right. Still love me, followers. Here it is. Tutorial misconduct at the highest level. These prosecutors are vicious, horrible people. They're racist and they're very sick. They're mentally sick. They're going after me without any protection of my rights by the Supreme Court or most other courts. Did you notice right there he said the racist thing again? They're, the prosecutors are racist. Of course, they're racist towards the white billionaire, whatever. But that clip was pretty unsurprising because it really is your only option if it looks like a lot of crimes are about to be exposed that you've done to start conditioning your audience to think that all the people who are gonna tell them bad things about you are just out of their mind they're coming after me for no reason so don't don't trust what you read otherwise there's a good chance that people would turn against them if they believe the things that are likely to come out in these investigations now moving on to the clip that got a lot of news coverage and that is when trump called for his followers to do massive protests if the prosecutors do anything that he considers to be wrong here it is if these radical, vicious, racist prosecutors do anything wrong or illegal, I hope we are going to have in this country the biggest protest we have ever had in Washington, D.C., in New York, in Atlanta, and elsewhere, because our country and our elections are corrupt. So that is super dangerous because while he uses the word protest, which is perfectly fine, what he kind of meant based on the actions of his followers before is something a little bit more violent. Because what was the last time that he called for a massive protest because of the wrongdoing of all these people? January 6th. And so I think calling for that type of mass protest is kind of a wink and a nod. Why did I wink when I said that? <laughs> to his followers that if they come after me, you need to go after them, which is very frightening. Also, if you notice, that was the third time he called his opponents racist, which is a really nice, good news strategy, Trump. Hey, Trump, I think you and your followers might have a little bit of underlying racism because you're, you know, calling immigrants from Southern and Central America invaders, effectively, uh, among many other things. What are you talking about? I'm not the racist. You're the racist. Everyone's talking about it. That you're the racist. What are you going to do now? a true intellectual warrior. And finally, you knew it was coming. He had to talk about the 2020 election. Million votes or 65 million votes. It's not possible that you lose. We got 75 million votes and they stole it. They rigged it. And it's a disgrace to our nation. Well, Time for another public service announcement to the right wingers. You have to understand why everyone who's not a Trump supporter is really upset by this constant breaking down the trust of the 2020 election results. Because listen, think about the Bush-Gore situation. The left definitely believed and believes that Gore probably should have won. But we have a judicial system for literally this purpose. And in the Bush-Gore situation, it ruled that Bush was gonna be president. And while people moaned for sure, there wasn't this constant, hey, don't accept Bush as your president. He didn't actually win. He's not the rightful president. The reason for that is the left understood that if you break down these processes that hold the democracy together, you're not gonna have one before you know it. And I've had a bunch of conversations with people who think the election is stolen, and I can provide all the evidence in the world, all of the audits that have been done, every time that it was presented in court, even to Trump appointed judges, they did not find it to be legitimate at all. So the claims of fraud are not founded in truth. But even if you do have in the back of your mind, I don't know, it feels like Trump should have won and he didn't. And then I hear a lot about fraud. You have to understand that if you keep going down this road, I'm saying you, but I mean kind of the MAGA movement, we are going to lose our democracy. And you have to see that because if you say the official vote count doesn't matter, judicial system can be damned, then all of a sudden you have no way of fairly selecting who's gonna be in power. I really do beg anyone who thinks the election was stolen to give some deep thought about it, look into all the different court rulings because this is a very scary time solely because of the rhetoric coming from Trump and all of his supporters. Our democracy is threatened and I really want you guys to give some thought before you continue with these actions. So a lot of the stuff in this rally was of note and being on the ground was pretty interesting because it really revealed to me how much the people at the rallies really believe the things that he's saying. Now, just for a bonus, Greg Abbott came out and spoke before Trump came out and he, in this short little speech, surgically attached his lips to the buttocks 
of Donald Trump. Let's take a look. Are you ready for Donald J. Trump? <laughs> Donald J. Trump is ready for you. <laughs> Donald J. Trump loves the great state of Texas. And Texans love President Donald J. Trump. He is getting ready to come out here and he wants to see you show your support for our President Donald J. Trump. Now listen, that's embarrassing. Even if you like Trump and or Abbott, you can admit that's just humiliating. Like, let's take, for example, someone that I like. Let's say I was at a Bernie Sanders rally and AOC is coming out as an opener. She's going to speak and she spends a big chunk of the speech just going, Bernard Sanders is so excited to come speak to you. We love Bernard Sanders, don't we, folks? Well, let me tell you, Bernard Sanders loves this country and Bernard Sanders would be an amazing president. And Bernard Sanders really is my favorite person. Please love me. Everyone who loves him, please love me. I'm sorry, Greg, you can't hypnotize the audience to associate your name with Donald Trump's. Every time they hear Greg Abbott, they're not gonna be like, Donald J. Trump, oh my gosh. I all of a sudden feel positive emotion towards Greg Abbott. Anyways, I just wanted to end with that because it was too funny. As I mentioned, I was on the ground in Conroe, Texas. So today I just wanted to cover purely the speech and then tomorrow I'll cover my conversations with Trump supporters, which was disturbing because one of the guys admitted he was at the Capitol on January 6th. Another had a sign saying execute Mike Pence and I was talking to him and he was off of his rocker and then a whole group of people walked up and were like yeah and also obama and also clinton murder them all hey let's get a chant going hang my like it was very very disturbing that that's something openly discussed at a rally for a politician so i will show you all of that tomorrow and give you my thoughts on it here's what else you need to know today a vote in the California legislature to pass CalCare fails, which would have been a publicly funded single payer health care program similar to Medicare for all, but a state version, which is a blow to progressives who hoped CalCare could be a model for a future nationwide program. And as I'm recording this, there are reports of a coup in Guinea-Bissau, gunfire being heard around the government palace in the capital and the West African bloc condemning the military for their actions. Tesla has to recall all of their fully self-driving cars, largely because of the function in the software that allows the car to slowly roll through stop signs in certain circumstances. A montage of Joe Rogan saying the N-word a bunch of times over the years has come out on Twitter. It was very disturbing and it's caused even more heat rightfully to come his way, of course, following a lot of the pressure he's gotten um, to be more responsible with his commentary about COVID and COVID vaccines after he's been spreading a lot of dangerous misinformation in regards to those topics. And finally, Trump is confirmed to have been an active participant in planning and pushing to have Homeland Security seize voting machines after the 2020 election, which could be categorized as actual criminal behavior. Be well, everybody.